La PlayStation 2, esa vieja consola que nos dio demasiados juegos buenos y tenía un enorme catálogo, pero también, al ser tan extenso ese mismo catálogo, salían juegos que lamentablemente se perdían en ese mar, y uno de ellos es del que les quiero hablar hoy, Michigan, reporte desde el infierno. Posiblemente jamás has escuchado de este juego, o siquiera lo has imaginado que es. Pocos, casi escasos son los que lo recuerdan. Para algunos tal vez un Lost Media, un ARG perdido de la PlayStation 2. Pero para los que conocen bien, es básicamente un juego muy parecido a lo que sería Outlast o Apnesia. Solo que en esta ocasión, el horror es diferente. A ver... Es técnicamente una aventura y horror de supervivencia. El juego sigue a un equipo de noticias que investiga un brote de sucesos misteriosos en el lago Michigan y sus alrededores. Tu equipo principal que es Visco, un ingeniero en sonido, y Pamela, una reportera, tendrán que adentrarse para ver qué es lo que está sucediendo. Sin embargo, todo irá a peor. Así que vamos allá. El juego comienza con tu equipo de Saka TV empezando su investigación en Chicago, investigando la extraña niebla que ha cubierto la ciudad. Rápidamente descubren que la niebla de alguna manera está transformando a las personas en monstruos carnosos, parecidos a unos extraños humanoides. Lamentablemente Pamela es atacada, terminando con su vida. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Let's get it right, okay? 3, 2, 1. Good evening, everyone. This is Pamela Martell. We report tonight on a strange phenomena. An unusually thick fog, the cause of which is still unknown, has cropped up in the southwestern area of Lake Michigan, centering on Chicago. The entire city is covered. <gasps> Someone screamed! Let's go! Right? What happened to you? They all got killed. What are you talking about? What happened? It came through the <laughs> Oh my god! Help me! Help me! What are you doing? <laughs> Run! Get away from her! <laughs> Just calm down. What's going on? What was that thing? Calm down, Pamela. Calm down? How do you expect me to calm down? Come It's gonna be all right. Hey, what's the matter with you? Are you just going to stand there filming? Turn that camera off. I tell you, Come on, turn Pamela. it off right Quit it. now. Don't get mad at him. Useless idiot. I've had it working with losers hey, like you two. Behind you. I'm joining up with some other team. Uh, What? Just keep quiet. Behind you. There's a. M -m 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 And stop thinking you can order me Monster! around. Huh? Después de lo sucedido con Pamela, el equipo Saka recibe informes que en el Hotel Internacional de Chicago se encuentra supervivientes, pero resulta que no hay nadie. Y también, en esta ocasión, debido a lo sucedido con Pamela, Ann Anderson, otra reportera, ayuda al equipo Saka. Sin embargo, son atacados por un monstruo. ¿Hay alguien en esta mesa? Nadie en esta mesa también. ¡Qué bloody mess, ¿eh? Huh? All right, let's give up here. There isn't anybody left in the whole hotel. Looks like it was just a false lead. Briscoe went downstairs a long time ago. And anyway, the other teams are getting the jump on us. We don't have time to waste hanging around here. We've got to get out there and find something. Huh? Uh, the telephone. Could it be Briscoe? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? I can hear you. Calm down. Slow down. Somebody answer! 
Observation deck of the center building? Is there anybody else there with you? <laughs> okay, I've got it. Just stay right where you are, okay? We're coming to rescue you. You hear me? Don't give up. We're coming, I promise. Do you understand? She hung up. There's a survivor in the center building. Let's go. Maybe we can get some leads on what's going on. But more importantly, somebody's in trouble. Whew! I'm a new man! Okay, back to covering the news. Where to next? That was a quick recovery. Okay. There's a survivor in the center building. Okay, got it. The van's outside. Let's go. I guess the big one got scared and took off. That wasn't so tough, really. But let's get out of here before the big guy comes back. Come on! Yes, let's go. Después de no encontrar más que criaturas, el equipo se dirige al Center Building, pero cerca se encuentran con Pamela, ya convertida en un monstruo, y más adelante, al ir explorando el edificio, se topan con otro superviviente. Lamentablemente, todo termina mal. There isn't anybody inside. No, I guess not. Where did they go? Hey! Look, there's somebody over there. Huh? P -p Pamela? Oh, Pamela! Look what happened to you. Poor thing. Hey, what's the matter with you? Hurry up and give me a hand! Are you okay, Pamela? I'm sorry I didn't save you before, but it couldn't be helped. That thing was eating you. There was nothing we could do. I can't believe you're still alive. Thank God. Come on, Pamela. Let's go. What's the matter? Are you all right? Oh, oh my God! Are you all right? What the? What's happening to you? What are you doing? That's Pamela, you know! Are you alright? Pamela! Pamela! Control for the shutter! I see it. Pamela? 
Pamela. Poor Pamela. I can't believe this. Yes, it's horrible what happened to Pamela. But what else could we do? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Briscoe. The survivor is waiting in the center building. Okay, I'm coming. I'm sorry, Pamela. Guess this is it. Goodbye. I loved you. I really did. As you can see, thick fog blankets everything. It's impossible to see even a few yards ahead. Right now, it's hard to imagine that this place is usually bustling with tourists. Hopefully, there will be some survivors somewhere. Saka TV news team will now begin searching for them. There's somebody here. We came to rescue you! Can you hear me? Answer me! I can hear you! Where are you? We're right here! But we can't get to you with all this rubble! We can't get through this way. We've got to find a way around. Listen to me! We're coming to save you, so stay right there. Don't move from that spot, you hear? But there are monsters! Don't worry. We're bringing a gun. I can't take it anymore. Do something for me. Tell my mom and my dad I love them. You're going to be fine. You hear me? What's your name? Becky Wands. That's a nice name. Yes. It's a very nice name. I'm Ann Anderson. Are you listening, Becky? Don't give up. You want to see Mom and Dad again, don't you? Then you can tell them you love them yourself. Yeah, okay. Are you sure? Do you promise? Just stay calm. Just wait right there. Okay, I will. I promise. Let's go. Maybe we can get there from the other side. Right. Over there. Becky! Hang on! Make sure you get this on film! That's enough! Después de lo sucedido, regresan a su oficina central, o sea, Saka TV, pero de momento para encontrarla totalmente vacía y no se encuentra ningún otro miembro del personal. Después de recibir una extraña llamada informando que habían supervivientes en un asilo de ancianos, el equipo se dirige a investigar. Pero descubren que algo más está pasando, pues encuentran a una reportera, compañera de ellas, llamada Justine Rhodes, encadenada de una manera muy extraña. Después de ayudarla a escapar, en ese mismo lugar se topan con una criatura aterradora. Man, it sure is quiet. Maybe everybody evacuated already? Hey, that's the telephone. Hello, Zaka TV. Hello. Yes, that's right. Yes. 
That's right. They've issued an evacuation advisory. You'd better leave the city right away. Did you call emergency rescue? What about the police? Okay. I see. All right, I see. In that case, we'll come get you. Where are you? Okay. Yes, I've got it. Yes. My name is Ann Anderson. We're heading over there right away. Please find someplace safe to wait. There's an old man all alone in a nursing home. We're gonna go rescue him? That's right. No way! I've had enough danger for one day. Thank you very much. But he's an old man left all by himself. We can't very well just abandon him now, can we? Let the police or rescue services take care of it. It's not our job. The police? Rescue services? They both left the city a long time ago. All this time, did the authorities ever try to help us? You just want a good story, that's all. Maybe so. But right now, the important thing is that there's an old man whose life depends on us. We have to help him. It's the right thing to do. Well, Briscoe, are you coming? Good evening, everybody. This is Anne Anderson. Just a little while ago, our news team received a telephone call. It seems an old man has been left behind at a nursing home. Here we are now at the Brody Nursing Home. We're just about to start looking for this man. Is somebody there? Help! Please help me! Over here! Over there! Justine! Anne? And Briscoe too? You came to save me? What in the world happened to you? I don't know. I have no idea. I was at the office when somebody suddenly attacked me from behind and knocked me out. When I came to, I was here like this. Please, get me out of these things. Look at these shackles. Who would do this? Whoever it was, he must be quite the sadist. Come on. We've got to get her out. Risco, get her free! But how do these unlock? Well, let's look around. There's got to be a way to unlock them around here somewhere. It looks like there aren't even enough balls to play nine ball. Maybe the shackles will open if we put the balls in the rack. Let's look for the other balls. All the shackles are open. Okay, hang on. I'll get you off of there. Ah! I'm all right. I can get up by myself. Thank you very much for helping me. Huh? But I'm the one that saved you. Oh, Justine! Thank goodness we got you out in time. But... I wonder where that old man is. The one that called us? He doesn't seem to be here. I didn't think there was anybody here. I was yelling and yelling. But nobody answered me or came to help. Until you guys showed up, that is. I see. But are you sure? 
Are you positive you didn't see anyone else? There should be an old man here somewhere. We came here because he called us. Old man? No, I tell you, I didn't see anyone. I don't know anything, not even where this is. All right. But I think we should look around some more. Could you wait for us for a while? That telephone call. I wonder if it was a trick to lure us here. Maybe. But who would do that, and why? Look! How should I know? But I guess you're right. I guess we'd better get out of here. Great. I'm all for getting out of here. We'll just check to make sure it's safe first. You wait right here, Justine. Okay? Okay, fine. Let's look for a way out of here. Ah! A monster! The garage door! We can get out through here! Justine! In here! Okay, I'm coming! Alright, let's get out of here! Where do you want to go? I'm worried about our co-workers. There isn't anybody at the office anymore. The chief told everybody to go home. I stayed and saw everybody else off personally. I bet that they're all with the families now, and that they've already escaped the city. We ought to escape, too! I'm worried about my family. They might still be here in Chicago looking for me. Okay, then let's take Justine home first. You can just take me as far as you're going. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll be fine. Our other teams that got sent out, the ones that haven't come back to the office yet, they might still be here in the city, too. If we're going to evacuate, we have to make sure the other teams are safe first. Son of a... Are you serious? I know where Kristen's team is anyway. He got word there was a monster in the old Miller family mansion. He took his team over there to cover the story. The Miller mansion, huh? All right, thanks. Let's go. God damn it! Be a miracle if we get out of Chicago alive. Después de rescatar a Justin, nos menciona que el equipo de Christian Hein estaba en una mansión haciendo un reportaje, así que nuestro equipo decide ir a investigar para ver si pueden ayudarlos, pero nada más llegar hay problemas y tienen que investigar más a fondo la mansión. Freeze! There's a monster right in front of us. Are you all right? Christian! Anne? Is that you? What are you doing here? We came to rescue you. I... I... I was a fool. I let my whole team get killed. What kind of director am I, anyway? Shh! Don't talk anymore. It's all too... strange. What's happening here in Chicago? And what Zaka is doing, too? I don't know the details, but... Jeff might know something. Lately, the Chief's been sending Jeff out on special assignments. Jeff went to St. Matthew's Church. It's ten blocks up. Went there to do a story. Oh, and... Could you... do me a favor? Tell my wife... something for me. I'm going someplace... far away... to do a story. 
then I won't be back. Tell her it's my lucky break. Biggest scoop of my life. Christian! Christian, wake up! No! You can't die! He's already dead. Let's go! <laughs> Christian! I'm so sorry! Goodbye! I have to go! Come on! Let's go to the church. Después de encontrar lo que quedaba del equipo de Christian y con la información que nos otorga, nos dirigimos a la iglesia de San Mateo para encontrar a Jeff, para ver qué tanto sabe de lo que está sucediendo en Chicago. Sin embargo, llegamos tarde y él se encuentra transformado en una criatura y tenemos que combatir. Good evening, everyone. This is Ann Anderson. I'm afraid I have nothing left to report. I've lost so many things. Chicago is in a horrible state of tragedy. I've come here now to St. Matthew's Church, but I've all but given up hope. To Zaka's TV dear faithful viewers, this may be my last report. Ann Anderson signing off. Wait! I saw something move up toward the front. Somebody's there. Who is it? Jeff? Is that you? have any other choice. Those guys, they weren't the people they used to be. They were just monsters. Don't think about it. Think about what we're gonna do next instead. <sighs> I guess you're right. We didn't have a choice. Thank you, Briscoe. I feel better now. Say, Briscoe. I want to check a few more things here, and I'm worried about my family, too. Go on without me. Okay, if that's what you want. The two of us will head to the main headquarters of the Zaka TV group. I bet that's where the chief is. I'm gonna give her a piece of my mind. Tell her just how it's been going for us out here. Good. You do that. Will you be okay by yourself? Hey, this is me you're talking to, remember? Después de la pelea, Anne decide separarse del grupo, entonces Brisco y el reportero novato se dirigen a la sede central, pero tienen un accidente en el camino, sin embargo, salen vivos del incidente. Después de eso y de caminar un rato, encuentran un campamento abandonado, sin embargo, se topan con una mujer llamada Nina, la cual nos ayuda en estos momentos e incluso lucha a nuestro lado. Sin embargo, todo termina mal para Nina. Man, I can't believe all the stuff we've been through. But I doubt we've seen the end of it. This fog just won't lift. It's really hard to see. How did you know we were a Zaka TV news team? Because that's a Zaka TV shirt. Dwight works for Zaka TV, so I recognized it. Huh? By Dwight, do you mean Dwight Murdoch? 
Yes, that's right. Do you know him? Of course I do. He and I go way back. He got hired at the same time, you see. He never told me he had such a cute girlfriend, though. My name's Nina. Nice to meet you. The name's Briscoe. And what about you? You never put down that camera, do you? That gets to be a habit with TV cameramen. But you probably know all about it. Yes, I do, actually. Dwight's the same way. So, why did you come here? Didn't you think you should evacuate? I heard the evacuation advisory after Dwight had already gone out to cover the story. He called me from where he was. He couldn't make it back to our apartment, so we agreed to meet halfway, here at this lodge. And so here I am. Why were you passed out? Did you get attacked? I don't know. Maybe. The question is, who attacked you? If he's hanging around here when everybody else is evacuating, he must be up to no good doing something he didn't want anybody to see. And then you showed up. I bet he hit you over the head with a blunt instrument. So where is this guy now? He's probably still somewhere nearby. <coughs> Calm down. There's nothing to worry about, Nina. It's just thunder. It's starting to rain. So you think this guy is nearby? I don't know. But don't worry. We're here with you now. That's true. I wonder what's keeping Dwight, though. Why don't you try paging him? Good idea. Nope. No can do. The phone's not working. Damn! So we're cut off from the outside world, huh? By the way, Nina, did you come here by car? Yes. I left it in the parking lot. Okay, good. Here's what we'll do then. We'll wait for Dwight until it stops raining. If he doesn't show up by then, we'll take off in your car. It won't do us any good to hang around here. We can contact Dwight from the office anyway. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Until then, we should each take a room and relax and try to get our strength back. You must be tired too, Nina. Why don't you take a shower or something? Yes, all right. I guess I will. Briscoe! We brought the car back! Briscoe! Briscoe, do you still feel dizzy? No, I'm fine now. Let's head out. What was that? It's nothing compared to that bear I killed one time. Ah, that thing wasn't so tough. <laughs> Don't let your guard down just yet. In the movie... <laughs> ah! Left. I'll make this thing blow up from inside. Nina! Look out! 
Después del encuentro con la criatura gigante en el campamento, llegan a la central de Saka TV para hablar con su jefa de por qué no los evacuó como al resto de personas y en cambio los mandó a esa pesadilla. Y justo ahí se vuelven a topar con la reportera Ann Anderson. Así todos juntos encuentran y encaran a su jefa, pero esta les revela algo que no esperaban. Risco. So you're all right. Thank goodness. Yeah. A lot of stuff happened, but we're still alive. Good to see you're all right too. How were things at home? My whole family had already evacuated, but I'm worried about Jonesy. He wasn't there. Jonesy? Yes, our cat. Oh, okay. Well, I bet your family took him with them. So what about the chief? Did you already talk to her? No, not yet. Say, Briscoe. I'm sorry. I've been so hard on you. I feel really bad about it now. Nah, don't worry about it. I was to blame too, you know. Well, let's go inside. Okay, now. Let's really let the chief have it this time. We've really got to let her know in no uncertain terms. The teams go through hell out there when we're covering the news. Especially this time. The government issued an evacuation advisory, but she sent us out anyway. A lot of our colleagues have disappeared. Some of them are even dead, like Pamela. I'd like to make that damn chief go through the same thing poor Pamela went through. Yeah. Damn straight. And you know what else? She'd better make damn sure she doesn't go exposing any more of us employees to danger. And she'd better let the ones who are left evacuate. I'm gonna make her promise. And you, you get it all on tape, all right? Okay, good. In fine work out in the field. You're the number one candidate for this year's Flair Award. Uh, am I really? And of course, I've been thinking about a suitable promotion for you. Wow, uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Now, wait just a minute, Briscoe. Have you forgotten all about Pamela? Oh! Right! Of course! Now, listen here, Chief! You deliberately ignored the government's evacuation advisory. You demanded that the news teams go out and cover stories. You unnecessarily put their lives in jeopardy. Oh my, I never demanded that the teams do anything. Just shut up and listen. And listen good, Chief. I, John Philip Briscoe, say this as a representative of all Zaka TV news teams. We refuse to get kicked around anymore. My, my, this is fascinating. Do go on. So this is what you're gonna do, Chief. Find out what happened to every single news team member that disappeared. And make sure we all get safely evacuated. You're gonna do these things and you're gonna do them right away. You got that? And you're gonna apologize to and compensate the families of the team members who died. I want you to promise you're gonna do these things right here in front of this camera. There's no need for that. All those things have already been taken care of. Oh, they have? But, hey, wait just a minute. Show me you're taking this seriously. Don't delegate these things to your staff. I want you to take care of them personally. 
Briscoe, let me share something with you. Five hours from now, there'll be a military rescue transport at the airport. That's the military. Do you hear me? I negotiated for this with General Sanders personally, you see. Now, I hope you're beginning to understand. Oh, I see. A military transport, you say? Well, that's great. I guess somebody as important as you would have lots of high-level connections like that. Gee, I... Well... So, Briscoe, would you like to be on that transport? Well, sure. Of course. You want to get out of here? Yes. Uh, I'll do anything. Well, then I have a little favor to ask. A favor, ma'am? What is it? One of our men is being held in detention in a certain place. Held in detention? What for? Please, don't ask. The man's name is Glenn Buckland, I believe. With the confusion of the evacuation advisory, I'm afraid he was left behind, still locked up. We just can't leave him there now, can we? I'd like you to go rescue him. Mm, okay. You want to make sure every single employee is all right. Isn't that what you said? Well, yes. Yes, of course. So, where is this guy being held? In a research room at the Von Erich Library. A research room at the library. Got it! We'll get him out of there! And as I'm sure you've realized, this could be a big scoop. You know, a dramatic rescue scene. Make sure you get it all on tape. And as for your report... Yes, ma'am. Your work hasn't been quite up to snuff lately. A news reporter has to be professional and accurate at all times, you know. I'm very sorry, ma'am. A pro never makes excuses for herself. Take the chance you're given and get it right. This next report will be your moment of truth. Yes, ma'am. I'll do my best. You do that. Very well. That will be all. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Excuse us then, ma'am. Después de que la jefa de Saka TV les asignara una nueva misión, el equipo se dirige a la biblioteca Von Erich, pero para liberar a su compañero, el cual se encuentra retenido, aunque lamentablemente algo sale mal. We're here inside the Von Erich Library. There's no sign of anybody around. The staff have all presumably evacuated. We're going to try and find the research room where the man is reportedly being held. This is where books would ordinarily be borrowed from the library. As you can see, there's no one here now. It opened. Let's go in. Mr. Buckland, are you all right? I'm Ann Anderson, a Zaka TV reporter. We came to rescue you. He's been killed. Another monster, maybe? Look! Over there! It's an air vent. A monster must have gotten in through there and attacked this guy. The worst has happened. A monster! It seems a monster found its way inside here. Zaka TV News did our best to get him as quickly as we could. But unfortunately... When we arrived, he had already been killed, in the horrible way you see here. The monster probably came in through that air vent, killed the man, and then vanished. Our news team is now in danger, too. I think we'd better leave this place at once. I'm Ann Anderson, 
reporting to you from the Von Erich Library. Okay, that was good. I just hope the Chief likes it. Oh, I bet she will. What with the gross footage and all. Wait, look. There's a notebook on the floor. Let's get this on camera, too. The poor guy. Did he die because he knew too much? There's something written under today's date. He was supposed to meet a Dr. O'Connor at Club Gochi today. I wonder who this Dr. O'Connor is. I don't know, but I think it's a safe bet. He knows the truth behind this fog and the monsters. So you want to go there? Of course. Let's go. It's a huge scoop. Siguiendo las últimas pistas que dejó el compañero, nos dirigimos al Club Gochi, que es básicamente una discoteca donde está un tal Dr. O'Connor, al cual logramos encontrar, y nos revela algo muy impactante sobre el origen de los monstruos. Lamentablemente, después de esto, él mismo se convierte en un monstruo, y apenas si sí sobrevivimos de esto. Thanks to the efforts of our news team, power has been restored to the building. We will now investigate the interior of Club Gochi. As you can see, Club Gochi is designed to look like a gigantic prison cell. Entirely enclosed in steel bars, it's rather disconcerting to be inside. But these days, Club Gochi is a popular night spot with the hip young crowd. He's here! You're Dr. O'Connor, aren't you? What's this? Who are you, people? You there, turn off that camera. I'm Ann Anderson, a reporter from Zaka TV. You're Dr. O'Connor, aren't you? Would you please allow us to interview you? What in the world are you talking about? You're making absolutely no sense. Dr. O'Connor, we have reason to believe that you know what is behind this mysterious fog. What is causing the gruesome monster attacks all over Chicago? We want to hear the truth directly from you. I have no idea what you're talking about. Why on earth are you bothering me? This is completely outrageous. You were supposed to meet a man named Glenn Buckland here, weren't you? Huh? How did you know that? Did you talk to him? Why isn't Glenn here? He's dead. What? Glenn? He was killed by a monster. He was attacked in the basement of the library. We tried to save him, but... I see. And you want to know more about what killed him, is that it? So you do know something, isn't that true? I'll tell you about it then. The monster that killed him is the military, the government, and Zaka Group. What are you talking about? The military, the government, and Zaka Group? <laughs> Trying to use that brain of yours, are you? Zaka Group is a huge enterprise made up of a parent company and some 1,300 subsidiaries. Did you ever stop to wonder how it got so big? Just what are you insinuating? DNA, that's how. DNA? <laughs> I see TV turns even the brains of those who appear on it to mush. You must at least know that Zaka Group has a patent on its DNA manipulation technology. I'm not stupid. Of course I know that much. But I'm sure your tiny brain has never imagined what Zaka could do with that technology. You sure know how to make people angry, don't you? <laughs> Soon you humans won't be enjoying such superior attitudes anymore. What in the world are you babbling about? Briscoe, there's something wrong with this guy. All right, all right. 
Calm down, both of you. I'm sorry, Dr. O'Connor. Why don't we all have a drink? We can talk again after we've had a chance to relax. Why do all of you turn to alcohol in every situation? Usually you hold yourselves in check. But then you use alcohol as a crutch and expect it to solve all of your problems. Isn't it all rather ridiculous? Besides, my body can't process alcohol anymore. In the end, no matter what I tell you, it's not like it'll save you from getting infected. What is this lunatic talking about? Hold on, Briscoe. Dr. O'Connor, what do you mean, infected? The virus. Virus? What virus? Is your head an empty shell as well? The virus is what's behind everything that's been going on here in the city. You've seen them, haven't you? The people being transformed. Now, wait just one minute. People turning into monsters? DNA? A virus? <laughs> now you're finally beginning to catch on. Are you talking about... biological weapons? Making viruses on purpose? Why would anyone do that? Isn't it wonderful? It's the latest form of bioweapon. The enemies are infected by the virus, and they turn into monsters and start killing each other. Its beauty is in its efficiency. Wouldn't you agree? But I'm afraid this virus has been a failure. Those infected can't be controlled and their sense organs degenerate. They display excessive reactions to loud noises which attract them. And they just don't make good weapons. How did the virus get spread all over Chicago? I don't know. <gasps> Come to think of it. About a week ago, a small plane of unknown origin crashed into Lake Michigan could that have been the cause? Yes, it very well could have been. Don't tell me you don't have a way to stop the spread and development of this virus. This guy is completely bonkers. Of course there's a way. When making a virus, you obviously want to make a vaccine at the same time. This vaccine prevents people from getting infected in the first place. For those who have already turned into monsters, the vaccine euthanizes them mercifully. If you have a vaccine like that, why don't you use it? The military carried off most of the vaccine. They took the lab animals too. I think they said something about transporting everything by train. They promised joint research, but they stole it all without contributing a thing. That's why I just can't trust the military. This is all so horrible. Hey! Give us that medicine! There's still time to save everybody! <laughs> why... why do you humans always insist on remaining human? <laughs> What's the matter? <clears throat> It looks like the symptoms of my infection are beginning to show. I, I, I have the vaccine right here. Then why don't you take it? I, I don't want it. It unfortunately can't be used in its current form. So what are we supposed to do? I, I, why? Why do you want to know? You want to play hero? <laughs> Just tell us. What can we do? <laughs> the virus I created. It's now here. Inside my own body. It's wonderful. I 
Power his own body now. Could it be that the guilt he carries for his sins is making him do it? Hey! That's enough! Run already! Después de lo ocurrido, el equipo se dirige a una estación de trenes para dar casa a la verdad de todo esto, pero entonces se encuentran a un colega de ellos, pero algo raro ocurre. As you can see, we're here inside the forest building. It seems to have escaped monster attack for now. Nothing seems to be out of place here. Let's go upstairs. It's Adonis! What are you doing hiding hey, in there? Man, don't come near me! What are you talking about? We came looking for you, man! Idiots! I told you to stay away! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Después de lo ocurrido, llegan por fin a la estación de trenes donde creen que la vacuna se encuentra ahí, pero en lugar está vacío. Apenas hay pistas de cómo crear una vacuna y no solamente eso, son sorprendidos por una criatura. Good evening. This is Ann Anderson. By going to Club Gochi and making contact with Dr. O'Connor, a biotech researcher. We learned that the cause of the tragedy now occurring in Chicago is a new bioweapon developed by the military and Zaka group. There is a vaccine that can save people from the terror of the virus. It could be located somewhere here in Grant Park Station. The question is, will we be able to find it? This is the ticket gate. Ordinarily, many people would be passing through these turnstiles in both directions. But there isn't a soul here now. There are papers scattered here and there. The only sign that there were ever people here. Hold on. The ingredients are written on the bottle. Sodium chloride, potassium chloride, Magnesium chloride. We could make a culture medium for the vaccine with these ingredients. Hmm. These ingredients are pretty common. Maybe we could find other things that contain them. What? Really? Yes. I bet we could even find them in a convenience store. Whoa! I think there was a convenience store nearby. Let's go! Just trying to kill it the usual way isn't going to work with this monster! What else am I supposed to do?
Con un poco de esperanza buscan ingredientes para crear la vacuna, pero se dan cuenta que ellos no tienen la capacidad para crearla. Sin embargo, deciden ir al aeropuerto como última oportunidad de salir de este lugar. ¡Hey! Flavorings. Amino acid. Sodium citrate. Calcium lactate. Potassium chloride. That's two! Magnesium chloride. Bingo! That's all three! It looks like it has a lot of other ingredients we don't need in it too, though. At this point, who cares? I bet it'll do the trick anyway. Do you think so? Let's go! We'll be able to make the vaccine with this and escape! Let's get to the airport! You don't want to go back to headquarters? Nah, forget about that place. Not only do we have the culture medium, but we've got tape with the truth on it too. As long as we have those, we've got the upper hand. I don't care if we're up against the Zaka group or even the military. Al llegar al aeropuerto, son contactados por el transporte militar que les pide encender luces para poder aterrizar debido a que la niebla no les permite ver dónde se encuentra el área de aterrizaje, pero al no saber cómo encender las luces, se les ocurre prender el faro, así que se dirigen rápidamente para lo que será su última misión. Good evening everybody. This is Anne Anderson. We're here at the Great Tezu Airport in an attempt to evacuate Chicago. As you can see, the airport, just like everything else, is blanketed by thick fog. Visibility is practically zero. We've received information that a military transport will be arriving here. For the time being, we'll move on to the control room. Okay. That was good. Let's go. We're here inside the control room. There isn't anybody here. Now we have to ask, will a military transport really be landing here to rescue civilians? <gasps> Something's coming in over the radio. This is the Great Tezu control room. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's going on down there? We're waiting for you to rescue us. Please hurry! Of course! That's what we came for. But you must turn on the runway lights. Okay, I'll try. Which one is the button for the runway lights? This one? No. Maybe this one? No! It's no use! None of these buttons work! Maybe the power is cut off. It doesn't have to be the runway lights. If there were some other landmark, something we could pinpoint, we could figure out where the runway was from there and when. A landmark or something. Hey! Look at that map. There's that lighthouse. Oh, you're right. The lighthouse. Would the lighthouse be all right? That would be fine. Okay, we've located it on our map. Now, if you'll just turn on the lighthouse beacon, we can land. All right. We're heading for the lighthouse right now. But you've got to hurry. We're running out of fuel. All right, we will. Let's get to that lighthouse. Oh. Well, we made it to the lighthouse. 
Now all we have to do is turn on the beacon. Well, now that we're here, I'm exhausted. Say, Frisco, could you two guys go on up without me? That's enough reporting, don't you think? Why? What's the matter? Let's just stop with the reports. I mean, what's the point anymore? Oh, nobody's going to see them anyway. That's not true. Even if we don't make it, there'll still be the videotapes. Somebody will see the truth. They'll see us, and they'll know we're alive. I've had enough. I'm tired. I can't walk another step. I'll wait for you guys here. You two go ahead by yourselves. All right, if that's the way you feel. It's too bad, though. Come on, let's go. So this is the lighthouse, huh? Looks like it's just you and me now. Well, let's get this taken care of. Hey, what do you think of Anne? You know what I think? I think that reporter knows who's behind all this stuff that's been going on. That one's the chief's favorite after all. Yeah, and that damn chief! She was the one that forced us all into this whole mess from the start! Goddamn chief! The next time I see her, I swear, I'm gonna... Oops. I forgot you were getting this on camera. You'll edit that part out, won't you? Man, that guy they were experimenting on. Do you think he was what was causing the fog? And what was up with that plane that crashed into Lake Michigan? This is the power supply to the lighthouse. Come on, let's go up to the top. <laughs> I'll never forget you, Nina. Your beautiful eyes, your lovely black hair, that soft, translucent skin of yours. And Nina, I'll never forgive the guys that put you in this situation. It's the... Y bueno, eso ha sido toda la historia de Michigan. Curiosamente es un juego que cuando lo analizas correctamente te das cuenta que para ser un juego de por ahí del 2005 tiene muchas referencias a películas, juegos y no solo eso, vamos, que tiene una historia muy buena. Pero ahora a ver, el juego toma muchas referencias de lo que es HP Lovecraft, la niebla de Stephen King, la cosa de John Carpenter y de hecho 
Si se acuerdan, en 2009 salió Rec. Y es muy, hasta cierto punto, parecido a este juego. Claro, cambiando los monstruos por zombies. Ahora, ¿cómo se juega este increíble juego? Técnicamente, al tomar el papel de un camarógrafo, el juego es obviamente en primera persona, solamente que aquí el juego al dividirse en niveles, que obviamente el juego denomina como escenarios, la interacción que tenemos como camarógrafos se limita a movernos por las calles o escenarios que nos pongan o interiores de edificios, enfocar la cámara en diferentes elementos del juego, seleccionarlos y ver qué nos dicen, porque en sí la que va a hacer las acciones no vas a ser tú, sino va a ser la reportera que se encuentre. Esta va a tomar las instrucciones que les demos, como abrir una puerta, agarrar un objeto, analizar un lugar, también tenemos acertijos que se encuentran durante la exploración. Podemos también, aparte, patear objetos con puertas, algunos enemigos, y no solamente eso, ya que patear también nos permite resolver ciertos puzzles, y créeme que esto hasta cierto punto ayuda para evadir ciertos peligros del escenario. Eso sí, algo que no mencioné es que la reportera puede morir durante un nivel, lo que salta a diferentes sucesos, ya que ciertas acciones se pierden, Ciertos momentos también se van a perder de la historia y al pasar de nivel la reemplaza otra reportera. En este caso son 7 en total y no solamente eso, también tienes que fijarte en los escenarios ya que habrá cosas y elementos escondidos, así que estate muy al pendiente. De hecho, algo que tiene el juego es que si has jugado Dead Rising, donde al tomar fotografías te decía que era violento, erótico y cosas así, este juego tiene algo similar. Que al grabar ciertos momentos o cosas, te da puntos de suspenso, erótico e inmoral. Dependiendo de qué grabes y en qué puntos, te puede dar más o menos puntos de esto. Y el total de puntos finales por cada nivel altera el final. También, al ir perdiendo reporteros, cada uno nos muestra ciertas secciones, ciertos diálogos que otros no tendrán. Así que puedes ir jugando con eso. Y otra cosa, también tiene enemigos, los cuales créeme, créeme, están no solamente grotescamente increíbles, sino que la gran mayoría parece inspirados en la cosa de John Carpenter y en varios libros de HP Lovecraft. Y no solamente eso, sino que también tendremos uno que otro jefe, los cuales tenemos que derrotar, que por cierto, el combate en este juego es curioso ya que no es disparar como loco, sino que hay que pensar cómo atacar, ya que en algunos casos, y como bien dice en el juego, las balas no le hacen daño. Así que tienes que buscar otros métodos, y eso es increíble. Debo admitir que la atmósfera de este juego es simplemente sorprendente, en serio. Cada nivel en el que nos encontramos te deja en un suspenso total, pues no sabes en qué momento vaya a atacar a un enemigo, vaya a pasar algo extraño, y debido a que existe mucha aleatoriedad en ciertas cosas, hace que tengas que estar más al pendiente. De hecho, algo que me encanta de este juego, y que sinceramente muy pocos juegos a días de hoy tienen algo así, es en el momento en el que suceden ciertos sucesos, ya que te obliga a tomar acciones. Sin embargo, aquí no te va a aparecer un recuadro diciéndote haz esto, haz lo otro, o una flecha guiándote a un objetivo, no, no, no. En el momento en el que sucedan estos eventos, si acaso vas a escuchar que alguno de los personajes dice algo como tenemos que derrotarlo y ya tú tienes que ver cómo hacerlo. El juego básicamente te dice reacciona ya. Y como los objetos que encontramos en el juego no brillan, están básicamente combinados con el escenario y al contrario de quedar mal, de hecho está muy bien ya que te obliga a pensar ya que a veces hay cosas que debes presionar y que no te dice nadie, pero te tienes que ir dando cuenta. Y vuelvo y repito, no está mal. Este juego no te toma como un tonto, al contrario. Ahora, lamentablemente este juego fue duramente criticado en su día, poniéndole calificaciones de 5 para abajo, diciendo que era un juego raro, con una jugabilidad terrible, que era inentendible y cosas así. La verdad no quiero imaginar qué hubiera sido si Outlast o Amnesia hubieran salido en ese entonces. Tal vez ya ni siquiera hubieran continuado esas sagas o directamente ni los hubiéramos conocido. El juego es muy bueno, la verdad. Claro, al ser de la PlayStation 2, obviamente ya hoy en día tiene solo dos opciones. Intentar conseguirlo en original, que sinceramente es muy caro, ya que es un juego muy raro de encontrar. O emularlo, ya depende de ti que quieras utilizar. Pero sinceramente lo importante es jugarlo, ya que es de esos juegos que más bien parecen que fuera una película. Incluso yo la primera vez que conocí este juego, 
creí que estaba viendo una película cuando lo vi en internet, pero resulta que sí era un juego. Y luego me di a la tarea de buscar de qué plataforma y di con él. Y la verdad no me arrepiento. Es un juego muy bueno. Claro, tiene una que otra falla. Es inevitable, pero nada, nada que rompa la experiencia o que directamente crashe el juego, no, 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 está bien la verdad. Claro, eso sí, está solamente doblado en inglés y en japonés, pero por suerte tiene subtítulos en español, así que no te lo puedes perder. Si eres fan de juegos como Outlast o Amnesia o Soma, este juego es para ti. No es un simulador de caminata tan como así, tiene sus momentos de acción, pero bueno, este es un juego que quedó olvidado en la PlayStation 2. Lamentablemente nunca tuvo secuela, ni siguió con nada, y gracias a que tuvo malas críticas, pues bueno, ya no se hizo más. Sin embargo, vuelvo y repito, si no lo has jugado, juégalo. Si ya lo jugaste, vuelvo a rejugar, porque en serio vale la pena. Claro, de una vez te digo, tiene una que otra escena erótica, tampoco tan exagerada, pero ahí está. Yo no las quise mostrar porque no tienen relevancia, pero bueno, hay quien le gusta la trama de otra manera. Yo eso lo respeto, y bueno... Esto ha sido todo por esta semana, yo espero que les haya gustado, sinceramente llevo años desde que jugué este juego y no lo puedo olvidar, y quería hablar de él desde hace mucho tiempo, yo espero que les haya gustado, denle un like, suscríbanse, envíenme un super gracias si quieren, está la opción disponible ya para apoyar este canal, compártanlo, yo agradezco de antemano todo el apoyo que he tenido últimamente, les mando un gran y enorme saludo a todos, yo soy Sarnat, hasta luego.